بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace and blessings be upon his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam As to what follows, I ask Allah azza wa jal to bless this gathering to make our intentions sincere for his cause, for his sake and to not make for anyone a share in our intentions The brothers and sisters in Islam Inshallah from tonight we will begin the explanation of a wonderful book which is entitled In Pursuit of Allah's Pleasure which is written by a doctor, Dr. Ibrahim and Asim Abdul Majid and Isamuddin Darbala which has also been supervised by Shaykh Omar Abdul Rahman it is a wonderful book and Wallahi al -Azim, it is worthwhile every single second you'll be sitting for as an introduction to the book and I will begin straight away without any delays before we go into the introduction of the book I'd like to say something to everyone and just keep it in mind and let it be something that you remember all the time and that is the value of the person really lies in a few things and from these few things is the amount of knowledge he has from reading reading is actually from the greatest greatest habits any person can adapt to so this is actually one of the reasons why I chose to read this book with you one of the reasons is maybe to yeah, and encourage you to get in the habit of reading if you're not already in that habit and also secondly to share with you some of the great great benefits found in this book so from the very beginning we'll go to the first chapter where it speaks about the reasons for writing this book which is the introduction I will summarize to you briefly what has been written there and then we'll move on the author began with the beautiful verse of Allah Azza wa Jal which is light in the midst of the darkness which is hope in the midst of despair the verse where Allah Azza wa Jal he says أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمُ الَّذِي اُتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَيُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنًا يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا Began with the verse which its meaning translates to Allah has promised those among you who believe and do righteous good deeds that he will certainly grant them succession to the present rulers in the earth he will give them succession on earth he will give them the power on earth the ruling on earth as he granted it to those before them and that he will grant them the authority to practice their religion that which he has chosen for them and he will surely give them and in exchange a safe security after their fee provided that they worship him and do not associate anything with him in this verse dear brothers there's a promise from Allah Azza wa Jal a promise for power a promise for victory a promise for safety a promise to find peace and tranquility and this happens when there are the rule when the rules have been applied 
And that is when you worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone and do not associate any partners with Him. Now the author began with this verse and then pretty much in summary to the whole thing so we don't go through it page for page and word for word he was speaking about the ummah how it was such a great nation and how the khilafah was a reason for a lot of the security that they had and a lot of the peace that they had and how this honor and glory that the Muslims had has now been replaced with nothing but words which are repeated any yani words of the past honor and glory victory words that are being repeated and he mentioned on how this ummah after losing the khilafah how they became in you know, how the enemies worked on it not only to remove the khilafah but the problem it didn't end there the problem didn't end with the yani, with the Khilafah being removed rather they actually went on to attack the minds and the hearts of the Muslims and they actually filled their minds with false thoughts wrong beliefs in their hearts with wrong beliefs to the extent that people became very confused of what to do and then he went on to say that even when a person decides to return he finds that the picture or if let me rephrase it he finds that the sources and if he was to go back and return to his deen the Muslim he will find that when he goes back he comes back to a mixed message a message that is mixed between truth and falsehood good and bad even from those who are preaching because of them having at times the wrong understanding the wrong vision which we will talk about it later on and he said that this is this is our situation or you can say this is our ordeal ordeal is mihna mihna is more like this trial this affliction that we are afflicted with which has been engendered from our ignorance and negligence before the conspiracy of the enemy and it came as a result of our ignorance and our negligence before even the enemy before even the kuffar went on to throw their poisonous arrows towards the heart of the believers so really we are the ones who carry the blame because of our ignorance and negligence to the command of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, they began the book by saying also that what granted the first generation of this Ummah succession and power and domination was their adherence to the Quran and the Sunnah, was the fact that they lived for Islam. They lived for Islam to implement Islam to spread Islam and this was the reason why Allah Azza wa Jal get granted them with the gift of succession and power and authority and victory and this is nothing strange to those who understand the book of Allah Azza wa Jal when he said Allah and Allah Azza wa Jal will give victory to those who give victory to him mean they give victory to his religion this is the equation dear brothers this is the equation and this is the reason why we are in our situation today because we have not fulfilled our part and that is we are not giving support victory to the deen of Islam so Allah Azza wa will not give us victory in return it's not due because of our shortage of wealth as many people who, ha who do not understand claim it's not due to our lack of resources Wallahi it is due to us neglecting the command of Allah Azza wa Jal and the teachings of Islam this is pretty much in summary the first chapter and then he moved on to say 
to say that as a, yani, as a response to all this, the situation of the Ummah, we introduce this book in pursuit of Allah's pleasure. A clear message and a reminder of the principles and fundamentals of Sharia, which should not be absent from any Islamic movement drawn into committing itself in all matters to Sharia laws. Meaning it is a, it is a manhaj. It is a manhaj and it's derived. It's a methodology. It's a way which has been derived from the Quran and the Sunnah. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the purpose from studying the book, really there's actually two reasons why I would like to teach this book. First is to understand the reality that you are living in today. Because when you are understanding the reality that you are living in today, you will understand the need for a change. The need for us to make a move as Muslims worldwide, individually and collectively. And this is what brings me on to the second purpose and that is understanding how should our move be? How should our reaction be? There are many people out there who have their thinking, they have their philosophy, they have their methodology, but not all of them are correct. Matter of fact, many of them could be a distraction from the real way, from the correct way, from the true way. Many movements have existed which were built on wrong visions, wrong goals, wrong, uh, wrong driving, wrong understanding. And as a result, masses, masses went astray, were diverted, were distracted. And this is where the need of studying such a book comes in. This is where the need of studying such a book comes in. Every one of us is in need for light that can guide us, that shows us how can we move. And this source, this light can only be found in the Quran and the Sunnah. And any movement, any claim, any philosophy, any methodology, any anything out there that is not purely derived from these sources based on correct understanding, it is doomed to failure. So this is from the purposes of studying this book. So the principles are not new, they're not innovated. Rather, they are established facts which cannot be ignored by any Muslims. Many people have an understanding to some fundamentals, to some fundamentals, but ignore many others. They understand some important areas, but they ignore many other areas. Others implement some, but neglect others. They implement some of these fundamentals and they neglect everything else. So you find that the approach is an approach that's lacking power. Especially at the times of calamity, you'll find that it's an approach that is weak. And matter of fact, it is doomed for failure because it has not been based and established on solid grounds. 